Hi everyone. Recently, I got an opportunity to interview Sofia Polgar. Uh, she is one of the three Polgar sisters who are extremely famous. Uh, Susan being the eldest, Sofia the middle sister, and Judith being the youngest. Uh, Sofia has written a book recently. It's called uh, "Amazing Artist and Dangerous Tactician." She has two fantastic skills of art as well as chess and she's combined it beautifully in that book i spent some time reading through the book and in this interview which follows you get a complete um, sort of picture of her life the way in which she learned chess from the age of 4 along with her sisters how they dominated the world of chess how they became the best and then, of course, meeting Bobby Fischer, playing that amazing tournament in Rome where she performed at 28-70 ELO, um, why she did not become a grandmaster, and, and many, many such things are there in the video. Uh, so do check it out, and I hope you have a good time listening to her and getting to know this amazing personality in the world of chess. Hello, Sophia. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? I am. I am very well, uh, Sophia. I just today morning was spent entirely reading your new book that you've come up with, uh, which is the amazing artist and dangerous tactician. Uh, that's how the book is, and you have the cover of the book, uh, the painting behind you. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, I'm not responsible for the title of the book. <laughs> that uh, the publisher uh, uh, came up with the title, mm. um, which is a little bit uh, strange for me because I don't consider myself as such an amazing artist, but I definitely consider myself as a dangerous uh, tactician. So, <laughs> so when uh, after I finished uh, writing the manuscript. Um, and uh, and the publisher came up with the with the title, and I had to come up with an idea for the for the cover, mm. and that's how the painting uh, was born. <laughs> yeah, that's how this is the very nice uh, cover of the book, and also it says that it's written by you, but has four words by Suzanne and Judith both. So uh, it's both a very my sisters. Yeah, yes. they were kind enough to to write four words. <laughs> it's a very nice way to to start the book off because you know they give give their impressions about you. Uh, my personal impression from whatever little I have seen you and known about you is that you're always very smiling, very happy and very cheerful. Is that is that the right way uh, you think? Well, I try to be, if, even in difficult circumstances. I always try to look at the at the half uh, full glass. But what was your uh, motivation to sort of write the book uh, at at this point? Well, um, actually, my dad was asking me to do it for years. Okay, mm. so, so that was one of them. It, it, it was sort of a book um, in process uh, for a very, very long time, because every time I started to play chess when I was four, mm. and every time I would play a nice game, do a nice tactic, uh, it would, uh, you know, that score sheet would go somewhere in a very special place uh, in the drawer. It kept to be for for a future book to be, oh. and and then later, of course, with the databases coming up, it, it, all all these uh, special moments of my chess career were were going into a database, and um, uh, hopefully to do a, a special book one day. And um, I guess uh, at, at some point it just uh, it just felt like the right time to do it, and that was about two years ago when I started writing it more seriously yeah and and it covers kind of both sides of your personality which is one of them is you being a chess player the other is uh, you as an artist uh, and it has you know when you go through it both of them are shown quite well because you know every um, chapter has like the chess elements in it then there are paintings around it 
and there are also some pictures so the book is very very vibrant as you go through it yeah i was trying to combine uh, both my special interests with which is chess uh, and the arts and uh, and was trying to use the uh, some of the illustrations my pencil and uh, uh, illustrations as well as my paintings to 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 go well with the with the specific chapters of course i don't only paint chess uh, uh, paintings but to to this specific book mm. i i chose the about 40 um 40 chess related paintings that i thought would would go well with the with the text and and with the with the chess material yeah, I, I have selected a few of them and I would love to go over them with you. Uh, but here, this is the sort of uh, the index of the book. It has the foreword, then there is a introduction, family background, basic chess lessons, watch your back, Sicilian, King's Gambit, attack on the seventh rank, Olympic experience, open files, going after the king, miracle in Rome and chess and friends uh, and you know I, I personally thought that how can you cover so much in one book but you've managed to cover quite <laughs> quite a lot you know in, in all of it yeah well it wasn't easy to uh, to put everything into one book obviously when um, when, when you write a book there, there's so much more to be left out but you, you only have a certain amount mm. of pages you can use um, I try to um, to make it as interesting as possible for uh, uh, for the club player or, or for 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 even beginners uh, who might not uh, have many chess books yet, but uh, to really to, to invite people um, of of all levels right. to uh, to enjoy the game. I I, I try to. I find it very important since I don't play too much uh, competitive chess anymore to do as much as I can to to bring chess closer to a wider audience. Yeah, yeah, like, I, I think it it uh, drives home that point because all the tactics are nicely explained and there are very nice examples from your games. Like you have examples of each tactic very nicely chosen. Uh, at the start uh, is this very nice... Uh, picture that you made of the chessboard and uh, you've thanked everyone uh, who are a big part of your life uh, yeah i tried to do a, a kind of funny abc uh, of, of the chessboard and there are so many people to thank and i apologize if the, if some uh, were, were left out but really there are a few groups of people who, right. who were who were very special to me and and gave so much to to my career and to my uh, development. So I, I, it was very important to me to to try to thank everyone for true, it. True. I I really liked how on the C file you put chess. <laughs> was there a reason why you put it on C two? Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, basically, every letter is uh, is uh, connected. Like H would be my husband, and ah, uh, and oh. E would go for educators. I didn't, I didn't figure that out. That okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that, that was the idea. Wow. wow. Okay. And uh, B, of course, is for best sisters ever. <laughs> amazing, amazing. Uh, you know, uh, Sophia, through this. Uh, interaction i want to sort of delve and also through the book like as we go through it and see some chess some pictures i want to go through your life and let people know more about it uh, so if if you don't mind we can start from the beginning uh, i i mean the first picture <laughs> of of the book is is this one and this is such a lovely picture uh, that is here like all five of you sitting there looking at chess relaxed i i haven't seen this picture before it is uh, there in the book yeah to me this this picture is really really like a time travel you know going back in time uh, and and a very 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 happy picture um mm. 
it's it's kind of amazing in the background you see the uh, you know the, the this card system ah. which you know that these are little boxes with with the card system uh, the way in in libraries you used to have you know each card would be presenting a book well back in the days on each card in these boxes you would see uh, the games a chess a, position a certain chess game a certain ah, chess game okay which was uh, basically cut out my by my parents from various chess magazines and uh, glued to the cardboard and then organized by the openings whoa this was because before chess base or any <laughs> databases were were present uh, and and this is how we would we would um, prepare for our openings wow. back in the days so and it was long nights of work for, of both of my parents and some of their friends helping out they were literally cutting you know cutting out from the magazines the games gluing pasting it to the cardboard and then on i remember on the couch they would select the different openings you know <laughs> and they would go into these uh, these boxes so other than the happy uh, <laughs> moments of the family <laughs> in the front of the picture um when i look at those those boxes in the background it just um it, it just amazing to think how you know technology and the world has changed since mm. um it shows a lot yeah. of hard work these boxes behind So, such organized yeah. uh, stuff and i think it yeah it, it, and you only see a small part of it here uh-huh. <laughs> yes. it needs a lot of foresight i feel like uh, you cannot do it because when you begin you already have to sort of visualize how it's going to keep going right it, because it keeps growing yeah yeah well my dad had many genius ideas and yeah this was one of them mm. i mean i i don't envy him for you know for the feeling he he must have had after putting all these hours of work into this and then suddenly chess base comes out and with one click <laughs> you can you can get uh, at least as much as, uh, as as there's in these boxes so mm. yeah it, it must have been um, quite annoying for him but because at the end you know the moment we had computers helping our preparations we didn't use these these right. things anymore right but but i i think he is he's a man of lot of ideas because you know i met him uh, just couple of years ago in dubai yeah. and i did an interview with him uh, and also your mother was there in the background uh, sometimes translating some of the things um, and he was showing me his variant of chess that he had developed uh, i think it's called the polgar uh, st- star chess superstar chess superstar yeah. chess yes <laughs> that's right and yeah. uh, he was Very he was so excited. passionate about it uh, and and as we discussed it oh yes yeah he never runs out of ideas and uh, yeah he, he still has the passion of a 20 year old it's it's amazing yeah and so when when i was going through uh, the pictures that you had this was one of the beautiful pictures in the book but also you yourself when you were very little you had drawn these pictures of your parents and you mentioned that while your dad is uh, dad's methods and all have been spoken a lot about uh, in in the press and you know in different books online and stuff um it is amazing how your mother also played a very pivotal role of uh keeping everything very relaxed and uh, you know together in the family yes it was uh, quite a combination uh, the, the two of uh, my parents the way they they brought us up my dad always had these uh, breakthrough ideas uh, and and my mom was just incredible supporting him and us in in every possible way i mean from uh, uh, from from the very little things of of you know taking uh, taking care of us and then uh, making our favorite the uh, dishes uh, to traveling with us uh, to tournaments and uh, 
looking after us in every possible way. I'm sure uh, without um, the loving background that she she managed to create in the family, uh, none of our um, none of our achievements would have uh, really happened. Hmm. True. And and when did you discover that you because you said you started playing chess when you were four years old. Uh, but when did you discover that you could actually draw and you know uh, paint and make these artworks? It was something that I just loved to do from really fr- from the moment I I had a pencil in my hand. Mm. And I remember even when we were going to tournaments, I would uh, I would doodle, uh, you know, um, and uh, and bring them home to my grandma, which of. Uh, Uh, my drawings to her Uh, but of course while until I was playing a competitive chess I didn't have uh, too much time to uh, to spend on uh, on developing uh, uh, this part of my creativity Um, but as I started playing less I I I started um, studying more in in the arts wonderful and this is also a very nice uh, picture of all three of you uh, starting to play chess. Uh, was was chess uh, very much fun for you? Uh, because I saw through your games, so tactical, uh, so aggressive. Was that a style that developed naturally for... I think also Judith is very aggressive. I, I'm not very sure about Susan's playing style, but I, I, I guess she was also attacking, yes? Susan is more of a strategic play, player. Mm. Uh, she, I think she, she's more. Uh, although she's very strong with tactics, mm. uh, of course, you you cannot really not be a grandmaster level play and True. not be good at tactics. But uh, but she does uh, uh, have a lots of uh, beautiful games which uh, which are without tactics. Mm. Uh, simply very very good positional play. And she, I think she enjoys uh, those games uh, by far the most uh, out of the three of us. And I'm probably the most tactical player. I mean, uh, I kind of get bored by the positional uh, <laughs> nuances of the game. Uh, I just like to go for the king. But but it's it's interesting you say that you are the most tactical when Judith is also there because she's known for her attacking style. But you... yeah, of course. Yes, of course. I mean, they're both phenomenal, and and Judith is the best woman player ever. Um, but uh, what I'm saying is, she's she's more balanced than mm. I am. Right. Uh, you like to you you just love playing tactical chess. Yeah, I I I've, I've uh, had many games where I would go for the tactics even on the expense of. Uh, uh, rather than going to a better uh, plan, uh, which would be more uh, justified by uh, by uh, uh, strategies. Fantastic. Uh, you know, there was recently uh, in India, uh, there is these uh, two siblings who have now become grandmasters, uh, Vaishali and Pragnananda. You might have heard of them. Uh, yeah, and and both of them have become very very strong. And I asked them at some point, like, how how is it, uh, you know, growing together to become like sort of the best players in the world? Now both of them are going to play the candidates and so on. So while both of them, of course, help each other uh, and has been very very nice. Um, at some point, of course, there's some kind of a thing like, you know, uh, Prague starts getting stronger. Vaishali is also trying to get stronger, but uh, someone gets more limelight and so on. Was Did that those things happen during uh, the formative years? Well, it's, it's interesting because, uh, yeah, it's quite exceptional that you have uh, uh, siblings... Um, so successful in the in the stay in the same field and uh, yeah in some families you have two like the the brothers you mentioned but the, the three of us is uh, is is quite unique and and i think uh, it's uh, it's again my parents who managed to to uh, to educate us and and to have the balance um uh, so, so I would give, give the lots of credit uh, for them because 
of course, in a way, there was some kind of uh, rivalry between us. Um, you know, every chess player wants to win a game and wants to get the True. best uh, position in a tournament. Uh, and often we play the same tournament. But uh, at the same time, it was never really a problem for us. So we were always rooting for each other, mm -hmm. always very, very happy for, uh, for each other's uh, success. Um, so, so, so on one hand, I think it was my parents who managed to to simply balance out uh, uh, if we might have had any uh, negative feelings. It right. was never really an issue. But there was also another thing um, uh, that, that that we were sort of attacked <laughs> from 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 many like the chess federation in Hungary right. was not supportive. Uh, at all, to say the least, and uh, and the fact that we were um, most of the time the the only women players uh, or the only girls on on, on a very male dominated um, uh, chess platform, I think it also gave us a very special feeling of togetherness mm -hmm. and um, mm -hmm. sort of fighting against the world together. <laughs> Uh, so so yeah, the the togetherness was much stronger than ever thinking of of uh, going against each other within the. I think this uh, story of your amazing performance in Rome captures that very well, right? Because both Judith and Suzanne come there, and then they didn't play that tournament. They actually helped you, and you went on to perform your best ever event in your career. Yeah, that was really amazing. I mean, uh, never before or after I came close to, to that performance. And uh, yeah, perhaps it was uh, it was uh, partly to to the help of, of my sisters uh, being there both emotionally and also, of course, helping them, um, helping to prepare for the games. And back in the days, there were also adjourned games. Right. So in in, in one of the games uh, that were adjourned, of course, it was a, a huge help that they were there to, to analyze uh, mm. uh, the game. I, I want to, I have selected a couple of games from there, which I want to go to later. Uh, Firstly, uh, one painting of yours which caught my eye at the very beginning was this one. Uh, it shows a chess clock which is flying and there's also a king in the background. Uh, can you tell us about this? Yeah, the name of this painting is A Time Flies. Mm. Um, yeah, I've, uh, uh, time is of course something that's... Um, that's so important, you know, and uh, and uh, and there are so so many ways of uh, of looking at it. I mean, uh, uh, and uh, and yeah, yeah, the chess king is um, uh, it, it's somehow the, the the king is is something I always go after in my chess games. And uh, yeah, yeah, it's 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 a complex painting, I guess it's. Uh, and uh, there are many ways of looking at it. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm, uh, yeah, it's, it's sort of time is something uh, that's always a problem, you know, to 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 manage your time the best uh, best possible way is mm. uh, is is a challenge uh, for me and uh, and uh, for most of us. So so I guess yeah, uh, I I wanted to 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 give this feeling of. Um, of the challenge of time. Does your paint like painting style uh, is, is like this? Like you create a uh, little bit of abstract artwork and then let everyone draw their own conclusions. Yeah, yeah. I don't like to to be too obvious. Right. Uh, I like to to leave the interpretation um, of uh, of the viewer and. Mm. Uh, and yeah, lots of my paintings are also, uh, you know, sort of. I'm painting it from from the stomach. It's uh, <laughs> it's not uh, not very well organized or very well planned, uh, mm. but sort of I, I let the the paintbrush to lead the way that's, and see where it goes. That's wonderful, and I I also like this one a lot. 
it uh, shows all three of you uh, sitting there and watching on a television the match between Karpo and Kasparov. Yeah, this is another nice uh, memory from uh, back in the times when we had the uh, black and white television. <laughs> And, uh, you know, the, the, the kind with, which was a huge box, I mean, not huge uh, by, by the, the, the size of the screen, but huge by the depth of it, you know, it, it, back in the days, it, it wasn't the LED TVs that uh, we're having now. Mm. And uh, we would uh, watch uh, Russian television ah. back in the... In the communist times, when when you know Buda, uh, Hungary was still a, a communist country, uh, we wouldn't have any American channels, and uh, and of course uh, on Russian television, which was one of the few channels that we uh, we could see uh, every day during the Karpov Kasparov match, uh -huh. there would be serious commentaries oh. by various grandmasters. And uh, for us, it was like the best show ever, you know. <laughs> we, were, <laughs> we were looking at our heroes playing the games and uh, annotated by those grandmasters. So it was the best chess lesson uh, ever. And we're so excited, like, you know, like like people would watch NBA or whatever. For us, this was the thing. And uh, yeah, this painting um, brings back those memories. And it's so wonderful because, you know, you, you are watching all of this and it didn't take too long for all of you to actually meet Kasparov, right? Uh, within like three years or so, uh, you were at this uh, Olympiad, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Thessaloniki, yes? Uh, yeah, in Greece, in, in 1988, Greece. that was the first Olympiad we played in and that, that's where we met. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and for us, it was uh, amazing to to see our chess hero and and hear his uh, opinion about our play, uh, giving uh, giving us some feedback and uh, and yeah, to to see him play up close, it was uh, quite an experience. We were just little girls. I mean, Judith wasn't twelve yet, and I was fourteen. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 you kind of caught the world by storm right at that point uh, winning the olympiad and all three of you being in one team that was just phenomenal yeah it was quite amazing i remember it wasn't that easy to to get on the team because uh, you know because of our our, uh, our age that mm. uh, it, it took for my father some time to convince the authorities even though our ratings were uh, were by far uh, the highest in Hungary uh, among women chess players, um, it wasn't easy to convince um, people that that these little girls could really give a fight for the Soviets mm -hmm. who have been dominated the, the chess world for for decades until then. And uh, yeah, it was quite amazing. Uh, when for the first time we we got the, those gold medals and, uh, and and holding the the cup of the Olympiad for the first prize, it was uh, quite amazing. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's something that till date everyone speaks about. Um, you know, it's it's never been repeated again, and I I don't think it will ever uh, be repeated. The three out of four players in a team of a national country winning the med gold medal were from one family. I don't think that's going to happen. Right. Yeah, it was kind of funny. We were even uh, uh, called Bulgaria <laughs> rather than <laughs> Hungary <laughs> in a funny way. I mean, obviously, Ildi Koman, who was uh, our, our fourth player, uh, did a great contribution. And uh, and they, it was the four of us who, who won the Olympiad. Hmm. But yeah, it was quite extraordinary to have three sisters on the team. And uh, actually, the overall uh, age of, of our team was an average of 16, I think. Because <laughs> the old wow. ones were 19, Susan wow. and Ildiko. <laughs> yeah. Unbelievable. And there are, uh, in the book, you mentioned a few stories about this, which I am sure people will love reading it. Uh, but, you know, to reach here... Uh, the training, as you said, was very intense and I was amazed when I saw this one. Like, 
was like <laughs> how, how can someone play chess for what was it 100 games in a row 24 hours 24 hour chess yeah. tournament blitz chess tournament in uh, in east germany back in the days there was uh, you know germany was divided and uh, from hungary we, we couldn't travel to to west germany but uh, it was okay uh, to participate in a tournament in east germany mm. and uh, yeah it was quite something i remember the long train ride uh, to get there and uh, and i i don't remember what time it was uh, with it, the games were starting but exactly the same time the next day the tournament oh, would wow. finish <laughs> and uh, you know and most of the players were of course grown up men and yeah. then the three of us came <laughs> little girls and gave it a chance we weren't sure whether it's it's not something we trained for i mean uh, you know it's like a marathon you don't you don't train for a marathon to and run 42 kilometers you just run you know maybe half of it and and hope that you last and but yeah for for little girls we weren't even sure if we'll make it yeah we were hoping they would but um as a matter of fact susan was yeah she won it yeah she won it i mean uh, she was still a, a young lady you know just a few years older than me uh, but all three of us made a a uh, this decent uh, score uh, even though you we were very little i mean so. if if you look at the bottom right picture uh, just <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just ensuring that you finished the event itself is an achievement you scored 63.5 out of 100 which is phenomenal yeah. Yeah, not so bad <laughs> it's amazing it's amazing i uh, used to love uh, playing blitz oh, i still do uh, mm. that's the only form i usually play if i play now but yeah it's uh, it's been part of our childhood and it's uh, it's but it was it was a big part of the fun um playing chess blitz games yeah right <laughs> right and this also i loved this picture um is there some some memory about it uh, it's very nice uh, it's maybe some kind of a computer uh, i mean i don't yeah. know what's the device there yeah i think this was the first time i I've, i've seen a, a chess computer there was some kind of um, a, a chess computer championship mm. uh, held in uh, in budapest and uh, yeah it was the first time i i played against the computer ah. um yeah it's uh it was quite amazing i mean th- th- these these computers back then weren't very strong yet and then to see the the advancement of um of technology with, with the years it was uh, it was quite remarkable yeah. yeah you now stop following chess so you I mean at some point you you do not know how the computers are now getting stronger and stuff right I mean or, or do you still follow a bit I follow a little bit uh, most of the time when when Judith is uh, doing uh, commentaries of the for the world championship matches or right. Olympics, I, I try to follow a little bit but uh, yeah not um, it's it's not on an everyday uh, basis anymore right and and this one picture i uh, got from frederick's article uh, where he wrote i i believe this is when you guys visited him in uh, germany uh, and stayed at his place uh, do you have some memories of that time yeah i remember it was a shocking experience the first time we saw the chess database databases he he showed us you know that um, i i don't remember how many games exactly there were but there were probably a few thousand or or maybe even a few hundred thousand games and uh, i remember when you would hit the search it would take maybe a minute or something like that to to load those games you would <laughs> you would see the the computer loading and loading and loading and we, we weren't really believing that it's uh, happening at all that at the end of the load uh, those games actually appeared wow. just like it was you know on those card uh, boards <laughs> that 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 we had in in our in our database uh, system 
and uh, we were amazed. And and then I, I remember Frederick said, you know, this is nothing. This is just the start of this technology. There will come a time when the computer won't load within a second or two and you'll be so impatient and you'll say, ah, why is it so slow? Why, why isn't it happening? So, so often, It's happening. Like, it's happening now. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, so I think of Frederick. You know, there's a problem in the internet connection or something, and then and we have to wait for a couple of seconds for something to show up. I always remember his words that uh, <laughs> back then it was sort of incredible to to us uh, to imagine it will happen, but it definitely did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it has happened, um, and now the the computers, of course, play a huge role in chess. Uh, I I I loved this little composition by you i think you were seven years old when you composed this uh yeah it, it, it's basically a composition in the form of a rook yeah that's right back in those times when i was a little girl i was fascinated by the uh, by all kinds of chess compositions chess problems especially made in two and made in three problems and uh, and there was this specific uh, theme where where uh, a, the the uh, part of the solution was giving checkmate by pawns. Right. And uh, so I was really fascinated by by this thing, and and uh, and I decided to come up with one of my own uh, compositions. And uh, yeah, this was the result of uh, of one of the few uh, problems that I've uh, created myself. I, I will let the viewers sort of figure this out. It's made in two. Uh, and also the rook is a big hint here. So they can uh, figure that out. Yeah, how, that's how... a pretty strong hint. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's so pretty uh, because, you know, whatever move black makes, uh, in the end, they lose. And And talking about this creativity that you had, which was in terms of sort of composing and all, um, also showed on the board in terms of uh, the tactics. And this is one of my favorite uh, positions that I, I loved so much. This was your game against uh, Simon Kerma, um, 94. I think mm -hmm. by that time you were already a very strong player. Uh, but... I still was. <laughs> <laughs> okay, still. Yeah, but this move, uh, Rook C4 was, was played by... Uh, Simon, and here um, you kind of figured out all the nuances which were there related to the back rank problem and all of it. Do you do you recollect this game? Yeah, this is also one of my favorite games um, uh, because it's uh, and it shows very well how you know there are certain patterns in the game. And uh, and there are so many levels uh, uh, where where you can you can use the same levels. So uh, yeah, in, in this position, uh, the black rook has just left the the back rank, and uh, as a result, uh, of course, the the king on the eighth rank is uh, more vulnerable. So the big question is how to how to go after that king because at the moment it's, it, it doesn't look like uh, white can actually get there. So, so I started to, to lure some pieces away from the defense of the... <laughs> yeah, of B5. The Beautiful move. I think the main idea is to take away the queen's control of C8. Exactly. So take... And now comes a very strong move. Maybe all those who are watching this can uh, pause the video here and try to think what did uh, Sophia come up with. Uh, and Sophia, what was your move? Okay, so uh, here is um, here when it, okay. First, uh, the, the previous move was a little pawn sacrifice. Yes. Um, he, to lure the queen, the queen, black queen away from the defense of the eighth rank. And uh, the next step after the queen was taking the pawn uh, is a knight sacrifice, uh, taking the pawn on e7. 
Um, and the idea behind it is to uh, to lure the, the rook from the center, the rook uh, from e4, mm. uh, to tempt it to take the, the knight right. on e7. And in this position, it creates the possibility of an even bigger sacrifice. Uh, uh, you, the idea wondering... that I had with the first pawn sacrifice in exactly. mind, obviously. But to my uh, uh, opponent, it came as a big surprise. Uh-huh. And that is uh, uh, Queen D4 check. Beautiful move. Oh, it must have been an absolute pleasure to make this move. Oh yeah, it, 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 it's my favorite move ever, probably. I mean, it's a check against the king. The king cannot move because there would be a checkmate right away on uh, on g7. Right. So um, uh, if if the if the knight blocks, uh, I think actually the knight blocked uh, yeah, in the ninety five was played in the yeah game. that was the game. But but if uh, he would have taken the the queen. Uh, then of course now there's a free way for the rook to um, to attack on the back rank, and uh, the rook and the knights can block for, uh, temporarily, but uh, uh, at the end of the day, uh, this is a checkmate. <laughs> it's it's very pretty. In fact, the the nice thing is like I mean, uh, the king on h8 is so toasted there. Um, it doesn't feel like there is a back rank mate, but there is. I mean, you would imagine yeah, something. Yeah, thanks to the pawn on h6, uh, right. which is um, taking away the g7 square, right? Yeah, and in the game, knight e5 was played, and then you yeah. took this pawn. Yeah, and now once again, there there is uh, also a threat on the back rank, but more importantly, there's a threat uh, of giving a check on f6, and then once again on the black squares around the king. Uh, checkmate will follow on g7. Yeah, and I think there was no way to stop it. So rook was taken and queen f6 was a mate. Uh, beautiful game and I, I enjoyed this. And in the same uh, sort of uh, feel, there is another game which I thought was very geometric, uh, very beautiful. And that was your game against uh, Stefan Moore. Um, okay. This was in 89. And uh, we reached this position. Uh, I I do not know if you are uh, if at this point, like the opponent sacrificed the queen. Queen takes b five. So I wanted to yeah, know. In this game, uh, I was on the defending side of the, of the back rank. It's quite uh, quite incredible uh, actually that. Uh, most of my games, when I was looking at my, there, there are roughly a hundred games in this book that uh, I'm covering, uh, and most of them uh, were somehow connected to the very basic uh, patterns, mm-hmm. you know, of, of the back rank, of uh, discovered checks, uh, and and you know some some of these basic tactical uh, themes. Uh, that every chess player really needs uh, to learn in, in order to, to to be able to win their games, and uh, it's quite incredible that most of my games or or interesting games I could simply put into these chapters, um, and and that's uh, that's how I'm I'm trying with in this book to to teach players who who want to to learn these uh, these themes that you know from. From the basic theme of just giving a checkmate in one uh, on the back rank, let's say, there are these different levels uh, that you can find in, in most Grandmaster games as well. But I think your uh, grasp on these tactics was very good because of the number of such tactics you would have solved, right? Oh, yeah. From a very early age, uh, and my father would uh, would give us many examples Uh to solve and uh, and yeah, practice makes perfect, I guess. <laughs> I think that book 5334 puzzles is the sort of culmination of that uh, example. Part examples. of our training, yeah. Part of your training, yes. That's right. So when, when your opponent took this night, were you uh, surprised or you had seen it beforehand, this combination? <laughs> Well, it's a good question. I don't <laughs> remember exactly what, what my feelings were in that particular moment. Mm. What is for sure, I, I I understood right away what his plan was. And yes. uh, 
His plan was to open up the C file, and um, and then after taking uh, the rook on e2 on the e5, his plan was that I would take back with the queen, and then obviously I would get made it on the back rank uh, by rook c1. Yeah. But I wasn't giving uh, giving it up so easily. And so you and played queen d1? Yeah, I moved the queen away. And the opponent had anticipated that and said, okay, now it's time for you to kind of resign because if you play rook a1, bishop takes a1. If you, anyway, you can't stop rook e1. So. Yeah, and those double rooks on the e5 are awfully dangerous now. I mean, for a moment, it really looks like there's there's no way to uh, to avoid rook e1 check coming, and uh, even if I open, uh, you know, with my pawns, then I would lose the queen right. on the on the first uh, rank, or uh, or if even if I would give a check on d5, uh, the king would still be under uh, uh, under lots of uh, pressure after mm. uh, blacks uh, moving away. Right. So, but there was a, another um, move that I found here. Uh, a Very tactical, beautiful one. A tactical way of uh, of the defense, and uh, that was that came as a total surprise to my opponent. And yeah. That is uh, the move rook a eight. Rook a deflecting and, the rook. Yeah, and and this is a perfect example of another basic uh, tactical uh, theme that is the pin. Hmm. And uh, that that uh, that you can see in 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 most of the the games in one way or another, and uh, the big trick is that now if uh, Black plays Rook E1, which was his initial plan, uh, it can simply be taken because the Rook on the eighth rank is uh, is pinned. Right. And uh, so I think he, he took the rook on a8, yeah, yeah. right? He, he took here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so if here, then queen e1 is just winning and rook a8 and here. And I, then comes... At some point I thought, okay, this doesn't work, right? Because it's still a mate. Yeah, that would still be a big problem. <laughs> but then, then comes the most basic uh, chess uh, theme that is giving the fork. Yeah. So by sure. moving the queen up to the center, and I'm attacking both uh, king and rook at the same time. And the good news for white is that uh, when the king moves away, the rook in the corner is taken by check. Absolutely. And so Very that important. doesn't leave time for black to give uh, the checkmate on the back rank. And now the queen is just too strong against the rook and bishop. And with, uh, you had to see best. one more move. Because rook e8, if you didn't have queen a5 here, you would have lost yeah, that's, again. That's the most important save. Exactly. Yeah, because going all the way back to the corner to a1 is, isn't possible because of the bishop. Right. So, uh, yeah. So, so basically, when I accepted the, mm. the queen sacrifice in the beginning of the, this tactic, I had to see uh, yeah. the queen a is is saving the game at the end of this line. No, it was uh, very beautifully done this entire... That's why I really liked it, the geometric part of it. Because every moment you had one move which was kind of keeping you in the game, but you were able to, to find... Yeah, I sort of had to make those only moves, but, uh, but they were perfect. They yeah. were good enough to win the game. <laughs> Fantastic. And and does teaching uh, feature a big part in your life? Because you see, this is somewhere that you're showing the same, that back rank made example, which we saw. Um, do you teach chess? Well, there are different periods in uh, in, in my life. There, there were a few years when I used to live in, uh, in Toronto, in Canada, uh, because of my husband's uh, uh, work as a doctor. Um there I've been teaching a lot. I've, I've been going to schools and giving private lessons and uh, uh, and online lessons uh, as well. So so in, in those years, I've been very active teaching. Mm. And then later, um, um, I, I was teaching um, or, or giving lessons on, on the Global Chess Festivals. So uh -huh. that, 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 the big yearly uh, global chess festival in in Hungary, 
uh, where uh, many times I would give uh, various sessions for for the little ones uh, uh, and and teach chess. And then later, um, I, I I didn't do that many frontal teaching anymore, but I was helping uh, a lot uh, to create the uh, the Judith Polgar educational uh, these books, uh, yes, uh, method and 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 the Chess Palace program. Mm-hmm. Uh, so so in that way, I'm uh, uh, I'm, I'm indeed. Uh, yeah, doing a lot for for chess education, and and it's it's a privilege to do it, and uh, it's a lot of fun to 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 see the little ones come uh, come back with feedbacks, and uh, on these chess festivals, sometimes uh, you know kids come up to me and and and, and give me little presents like their sketches of uh, of uh, uh, sort of trying to copy my illustrations for this uh, this chess um, uh, you know the chess books I've I've been uh, working on for, mm. for kids. Uh, so yeah, it's something I really like to do. Amazing. You mentioned that you you were in Canada in 2012 and you uh, because of your husband's work uh, and it must be mentioned that your your husband is also a grandmaster. Uh, oh yeah, he's, he's a stronger <laughs> player than I am. So, yeah. Could could you yeah. tell us uh, a bit about how both of you met and how did you come together? <laughs> Well, if I tell you everything here, who's gonna read the book? <laughs> okay, we'll 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 not reveal everything there. Uh, but but I guess the first time you met him was it in a in a tournament like playing against? Yeah, him? yeah, it was uh, in nineteen ninety five. Yona um, was uh, organizing um, the European uh, uh, Chess Championship for uh, uh, under twenty uh, years of age. And as part of that um, uh, uh, tournament, or as part of that um, festivities, there was a special tournament where uh, the three of us, my sisters and I, would play a blitz tournament with the Israeli national team. Mm. So, uh, yeah, that's where we met playing each other and uh, yeah the rest is history <laughs> Amazing. and now now your parents to two kids so it's fantastic uh, and as we were talking about the book uh, you know there are a lot of things that people can learn right from not just tactics but also such basic end game positions they are explained well and what i really liked is after every chapter there you there are these things to remember that you talk about like they can it's like the summary of the entire chapter yeah, yeah. I've tried to um, to really uh, collect the the games with with certain uh, themes. Uh, you know, m- many uh, many chess books are are made in a chronological order, where you know from um, uh, from uh, childhood until uh, a certain player would become a, a grandmaster or a champion. I thought it would be much more helpful for the reader. Uh, who would uh, who who would like to uh, learn more about the game? To uh, to put the chapters in different themes, and uh, so I would start with uh, just explaining the uh, the pattern itself in the beginning of the of the chapter in a very simple way that is uh, even. Um, easily understandable for for perhaps the beginners and then uh, i would go on the different examples uh, um, gradually more uh, uh, difficult ones and uh, yeah i think it's uh, important to summarize at the end of the uh, of each chapter uh, what you've learned cool. so so hopefully this will help the um, the people to, who read the book to improve their games Absolutely. And there was also this uh, chapter on dragon that you wrote. Uh, Was that uh, an opening that you enjoyed playing with white? Because I don't think you played it with black, yes? 
I've probably never played it with black, but um, but I played the sister lane with both colors. So mm -hmm. and uh, and against the dragon, uh, yeah, I've I've enjoyed playing with white. Um, it, it's the craziest possible opening, yeah. So. Uh, so I thought if, if it's a, a book about tactics, I, I, I cannot not have a, a chapter about, uh, <laughs> about the Sicilian and the specifically the dragon. Uh, talking about crazy openings, I guess the King's Gambit will take the, the cake there. And I think you it's one of your favorite openings. Uh, it also fits in your style very well. And if I'm not mistaken, the first Grandmaster that you beat, you played the King's Gambit. That's correct. Yeah, it's it's great memories. Childhood memories <laughs> and the things can be go well together in my case. <laughs> yeah, and, and I had actually uh, taken that game. Uh, it, it was a long. It was not like a King's Gambit sort of a game, uh, because it was. Yeah, that game specifically wasn't tactical at all. Yeah, it, it was pretty much a, a strategical game with an interesting end game at the end. But it was uh, it was nice. Uh, to see that uh, you know you you beat a very strong player using this opening uh, and in some ways i guess people might get inspired to play this opening from from this book you know because you, you show some <laughs> old games some very inspiring games also in the book yeah well they sure sure inspired me when i was a kid i used to love to play this opening i must admit at some point I've 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 lost a couple of games that made me give it up, mm. but until a certain level, um, it's a, it's a great opening. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I mean, I would uh, ask the readers to go through this game. It is a very nice one, a very nice rook end game actually, uh, which you mm -hmm. managed to to win. It's uh, one of the few games, if not the only game, where where I I. I got the chance to play against triple pawns. I mean, double pawns on the same line is is kind of common in games, you know. But uh, but the joy of eating, you know, one, two, three <laughs> <laughs> triple pawns on the same line that was kind of special. That's amazing, amazing. <laughs> and to do so I, I, against the grandmaster, true. Uh, so I managed to to make victory for the first time. <laughs> Another uh, painting of yours which uh, really caught my attention was this one uh, because it has this balloon and there's a knight which is sort of hanging. There's a person there. Uh, if you can tell us a bit about this. Yeah, this uh, this was a special painting for me because um, then for the first time I found out that the one of the chess uh, festivals will be in the National uh, Art Gallery in Budapest. Uh, it, it it was uh, it was quite amazing. I mean, uh, you know, there are there are many interesting uh, places uh, where chess is played. I remember. Um, uh, like one of the world championship matches were, were yes. on top of the world in the World Trade Center. And, you know, there, there were some special places, but uh, but to have a chess festival in, in the National Gallery, uh, it's it's not something I've ever been part of before. And so, so I thought, okay, this is something that uh, I should definitely um, uh, take some... Um, some ideas from and uh, and uh, so the outcome was this uh, this homage to one of the 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 famous Hungarian painters and and in that gallery there's a uh, there's a very similar painting uh, of course without the chest knight but <laughs> this was my interpretation mm -hmm. of uh, of making um, a homage uh, uh, to to the artist and to combine it uh, with the uh, with the chess beautiful uh, for that particular go by chess festival that's that's so nice that's so nice one important uh, thing that i wanted to discuss and also talk about was uh, bobby fisher uh, you made this amazing painting of his i i think this is just brilliant uh, the thought <laughs> behind it um how you kind of have shown his two sides of to his okay. personality in this uh, 
picture and it's not just that it's it's kind of an imagination for you right because you spent time with him he was there you trained with him uh, practiced uh, played with him if uh, i mean at some point i think you beat him in uh, fisher random chess or you know this could you could you tell us a bit about uh, just meeting fisher and spending time with him yeah well it's a very mixed feelings when i when i think about it that's how the uh, the painting was also born because uh yeah this fellow is <laughs> is really incredible i mean on on one side uh, you know he was my chess hero like men chess players would you know idolize him uh, and yeah he was obviously the one of the best chess players if not the best chess player ever and um, making being so much ahead of his time mm. uh, he was a chess genius and uh, that that's what the uh, one part of the picture is uh, is resembling with the white king standing mm. and uh, and him being a young uh, a handsome man uh, uh, with the, you know with his eyes glowing and you know being all positive uh, and 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 going uh, in doing a lot for chess right and then on the other hand um uh, he was totally crazy i mean i don't have, don't, don't have an uh an, an better way to put it i mean his his mind was sick he was uh he was terribly anti-Semitic and have these conspirational ideas. And so it was a very strange mix mm. uh, of his personality. Meeting him was, in a way, you know, the first time I met him, it was like, wow, it was such an honor. I never thought, you know, one of these, um, you know, someone who I've who I've only met from from the books and learned from his games. I never thought I would ever um, meet him, especially since he retired for the from the game. Right. Basically, uh, before I was born. Right. Uh, so it was it was a lot of anticipation and very exciting to meet him. And uh, and by the time we met him, he was uh, he was a friendly old man, you know, at the age of my father. And he was funny. He was he had this huge appetite. I mean, whenever we would go out eating, you know, he, he would eat as much as the rest of the table <laughs> all together. Uh, so and he would play ping pong and he would play some um, some uh, Fisher random chess. And he was still a very good player. Mm -hmm. Um, you you uh, felt his strength, yes, when analyzing and stuff. Like he was very good. He was very he was he was grandmaster level. Mm -hmm. I I don't think he would have stood a chance against someone like Kasparov or an end, but uh, he was still very good. He was he was grandmaster level player. Mm -hmm. Um, but then when he would start uh, talking about his. Uh, his ideas of you know all the pre-arranged games uh, from his point of view all the russian <laughs> games would be pre-arranged and uh, and he was totally paranoid and uh, there's this jewish conspiracy that he would say and you know i mean it, at that point when, when when he was saying these things i was saying like in a way i wish i've never met the guy because mm -hmm. You know, then then I could still just say, okay, he's just this genius and amazing uh, um, personality of chess. And unfortunately, after meeting him, um, it's it's a very mixed uh, emotion because on one way he, in one way he did a lot for chess, on the other way, uh, he also did a lot of bad publicity for chess. Yeah, true. And this this kind of captures it beautifully. I think uh, the 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 white king standing, the black king sort of on the side. Yeah, and, the name uh, of this painting is the king is down. 
Uh, I painted this. Um, when did you paint uh, this, it? Approximately. This was this was after he died. I was asked uh, to write an article in uh, in Forward magazine, uh, which is included in the book as well. Mm. Uh, so I've uh, I, I, I've written a, um, a remembering uh, piece uh, about uh, Bobby Fisher. Uh, and this was uh, I painted uh, this painting for that article as an illustration. Uh, um, yeah, in, beautiful in, in memory. Yeah, and uh, there was one more uh, thing about uh, someone in in your life who has helped a lot, uh, and that was uh, Joop Van Oosteren. And uh, yeah. I think. You mentioned that he was the first ever um, sponsor, right? Uh, who who helped, uh, or maybe one of the first sponsors. Uh, and yeah, he was certainly our biggest uh, sponsor. He helped a lot. He was uh, he was buying the first computer uh, that we could use uh, for the chess databases, and uh, he would um, he would organize some very special tournaments uh, in Aruba and also in Europe. Uh, yeah, he was uh, he was a very special uh, uh, man. He loved the game of chess. Yes. Was, yes. Uh, he was organizing uh, many uh, top uh, events, and uh, yeah, um, I, you can read more about him and uh, uh, his his help of the game in, in the book as well. Yeah, yeah. no, you you mentioned this beautiful philosophical part as well of, uh, you know, because he had mentioned that uh, I would live my uh, life to the fullest after a few years and then he met a tragic end. But uh, uh, that also uh, the philosophy in the book, I mean, I, I, I when I read it, it was like everything kind of combined you know chess art there's also some philosophical aspect to it so very beautiful yes quotes. there are also um, those quotes I, i've included little quotations um uh, that that i like that yeah. there's really so much um so many metaphors and analogies that uh, uh, that can be made between chess and life and uh, and my favorites are included uh, yes. in the book as well. All all great players and their quotes and so on. Um, yeah. One of the things that you also mentioned is how to attack. I like this concept of furious six. Uh, yeah. And these are the key squares where generally sort of attacks happen. And that's covered in the book. Uh, I also want to touch upon, of course, this part of the book, which is just uh, the high point of your chess career as well you were just 14 years old when you went to this tournament in 89 and you performed at 2879 elo scoring eight and a half out of nine Beating. yeah it was quite amazing i mean i, I just won game after game and grandmaster again after grandmaster that i, I managed to beat Basically, until until uh, after uh, uh, round seven, uh, I didn't even realize how good I'm doing. And I said, wow, I have seven out of seven. Hmm. <laughs> it came to me as the biggest surprise. And then I won one more game. And uh, and the big hero of the tournament was actually Donato in the last game, who managed <laughs> to make a draw against me. <laughs> It it uh, beautifully portrayed through this picture in the in the uh, magazine in Inside Chess where you are holding this cup happily and uh, I think it's uh, Chernin and Razuayev in the background who are just That's standing right. there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> beautiful uh, picture there. And um, just going to one of the games from there, uh, this was with Alexander Chernin who was. A very strong grandmaster, uh, twenty five eighty at that point, and yeah. you just completely attacked without any fear. Uh, Ninety five. Yeah, this uh, this position is a great example of the power of the of the bishop on the long diagonal. Mm. Um, uh, although there are a bunch of knights on this diagonal, uh, within a couple of moves. Uh, it's all being cleared out and then uh, 
the big threat on the G7 square, one of those furious uh, six <laughs> squares <laughs> around the king uh, is, uh, is getting under attack. Yeah. Yeah. I, I had this question. Did you never sort of feel the fear of facing such uh, strong players? That Did that thought never cross? Because in order to play such chess, you, you don't have to fear or sort of respect these top players, at least over the board. I think I was probably too young to fear anything. <laughs> <laughs> no, fear was not part of the game, not mm. in my case. Beautiful. Okay, and then of course, if, if I would play him now, I would fear him. <laughs> <laughs> but I was fourteen, you know. <laughs> true, true. If pawn takes, you had knight f five prepared, very strong uh, sacrifices, and this would lead to a mate. Yeah, it's again double attacks and pins, uh, all part of the tactic. And here again, you find a classy move, uh, white to play. Yeah. Maybe everyone can pause and try to think. What did Sophia play here? Yeah, you sacrificed another knight, knight e6. Yeah, the natural response would have been just to take back the, the knight on the five, I guess. Yeah. But uh, there's a stronger way with the, with, with the, the knight jump uh, is a discovered attack uh, by the bishop on the long diagonal together with the queen uh, on the g file there threatening with made there so so the knight cannot be taken because of this and then you just got a completely winning position and, yeah. and went on to Up win the material yeah yeah and also i think uh, there were there were some other uh, very nice games i i guess um there was this game with sam palatnik uh, sorry simon palatnik which was very uh nice and I think uh, you managed to also uh, beat him with... Yeah, it's another fun game from the same tournament in Rome, uh, where once again, the, the black square bishop on the black squares is, is, uh, is making a lot of trouble uh, for, the black, for the king on the black uh, diagonal. It... Uh, the pawn cannot be taken here, of course, because, because of bishop e5 is True. a big threat. True. Was the dark squared bishop like your favorite piece, just like how Fisher had his light squared bishop? Um, <laughs> I don't know. My favorite piece is the knight. I ah. mean, that's the most tactical piece on the board. So, you know, the amount of times I managed to surprise my opponents with the, uh, with nasty jumps was, <laughs> was uh, making it my favorite piece for sure. Right. And in this case... Uh... You you finished it off beautifully here with a very nice move, queen f8, uh, yes. threatening the f6 pawn, and exactly. when uh, this was played, you even sacrificed your rook, and then in the end, this was easily winning. Yeah, this is a winning end game with the bishop against the black has a bunch of pawns, but uh, nice and slow they will all fall, and, uh, and black has no chance to save the game. And and it's like, you know, you were beating all these top players by sort of checkmating them. It was not even like <laughs> positionally or or even, I mean, this move, rook e4, your threat is bg7, queen h7, rook h4. You see this in sort of books and you were doing it there. Yeah, yeah, it was amazing. I mean, um, I guess it was, the stars were standing right <laughs> somehow those, those days because I played my best, but these grandmasters were far from from playing their best in, on this tournament. So, um, yeah, uh, yeah, I guess everything somehow just worked on, on that particular tournament. You know, when, when I saw through these games and of course all the examples, uh, one question that naturally comes to my mind is why were you not able to sort of become a GM? And have you also tried to think about that? Well, on this tournament, I not only made a GM norm, but actually exceeded it by, by, by a huge margin. Or something. Yeah, yeah, by yeah. a huge margin. <laughs> uh, but I didn't manage to get all the three uh, GM norms, uh, which uh, required uh, for getting the title. Um, honestly, I I don't think it makes a big difference. I've had my share of uh, great tournaments. 
uh, I, I've, uh, in my best years, I was a 2,500 player, which is brand master strengths. So, you know, it, to me, it's just a title. I sure. mean, um, of course, it would have been nice to have, uh, but uh, it never really bothered me too much. Do, do you get this thought that maybe if I restart playing, I can go after it? <laughs> well, you never know. You never know what's, uh, what's in the future, but I certainly don't have any plans like that now. <laughs> Okay. And finally, uh, of course, I wanted to uh, tell people about your website. Uh, it is sofiapolgar.com. Yes. Uh, and it has beautiful uh, sort of mixture of art and chess. Yeah, there's a large uh, online art gallery where you can see all my uh, chess related paintings as well as uh, my other paintings um, you know whether uh, be it portraits or uh, landscapes or um, you know abstract paintings uh, so you're more than welcome to check it out amazing and do you still spend time painting right now or in in these days in general yes we're we're a little bit of, of troubled times. I live in Israel and uh, fortunately our, our country is in war. So it's uh, it's a bit hard for me to to find the inspiration in, in these times uh, uh, for painting. I, I know I have to get back to it. Right. Lately I'm doing more writing and trying to um, trying to tell a, a little bit of our part of the story because um, uh, unfortunately, around the world, it seems like uh, people either don't understand or uh, um, or or simply take the side of uh, of the Palestinian people, who are, uh, of course, being in 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 a very difficult situation. And and uh, my heart uh, breaks also for children on the other side. But uh, for some reason, many uh, don't understand uh, that my country is simply under an existential threat. Uh, there was a war started against Israel on October seventh, uh, and we simply don't have a choice. Um, we have to defend ourselves because, mm -hmm. you know, even now as we talk. The rockets can launch here anytime, and then the siren would go off. I would go down to the shelter. Really? So it's it's kind of a crazy situation, um, and uh, uh, yeah. But I hope for the best, and I hope someday there will be peace in this region, and uh, and I will be painting happy paintings again. Yeah, I mean, I think living through this sort of uncertainty is is extremely tough uh, right now and as you said anything can happen at any point that's never easy yeah worse worses are also are, are always terrible mm. i mean uh, whether it's in the ukraine or uh, uh, or in sudan or uh, or in syria i mean it it really is crazy i mean uh, uh, my hope is that some someday wars will be only played uh, on the chessboard. Um, uh, that that's really kind of like a prayer for me. That's that's so well uh, put. It's so nicely hope, put. Hope to live the day that that it will happen. And uh, Sophia, your book uh, is something that people can get. I'll put the link in the description. Uh, but there's also a collector's edition in there, uh, which means that people get your signed copy. Is that correct? Yeah, there's an only 200 copies. So I don't know if there are any any more left. There are probably maybe a, a few more uh, of the special edition. Uh, uh, there are 200 copies that I have signed and that, that is the hardcover uh, uh, edition of the book. There's, there's the soft cover that you can get on, on in many places online or in just uh, shops as well as there's a kindle um uh, edition of mm. my book. fantastic and one part which you haven't uh, 
I don't know if you've covered in depth. Uh, and is this the picture of your kids? Is this uh, the one? Yes. Yeah, this is my younger son, yeah, okay. um, and, uh, and my little niece. Uh, ah, niece. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it's one of my uh, favorite uh, pictures. Um, yeah, I just love the uh, teaching uh, kids, and um, and I think chess is really great uh, uh, for many reasons. But one of them is that you can play it at any age. So right. you know, you can be four years old or or eighty four years old, and anything in between. It's 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 just a great game to mm. sharpen your mind connect people and uh, and have fun with but both your kids are now they they've grown up and i think one of them is in the university is that correct they're both in the both. university okay alon is uh, has one more year in the, in his studies for physiotherapy and uh, yov uh, is uh, in his uh, third year of uh, engineering wow yeah. wow brilliant well Sophia, it was a absolute pleasure talking to you through this book. I got an opportunity, thanks to Frederick as well, to talk to you, to read your book, to go through the entire life journey of yours. Uh, it's such an exciting and interesting life uh, that that you've lived until now. Of course, many more things will come, but it was such an honor to to talk to you. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing. Thanks for your interest, and uh, keep up the good work. Thank you.